Let's talk first about the scale of this problem. Rape cases are at record highs, over 60,000 cases reported to the police in the year to September 2021, convictions at record lows, an estimated 1.6 million women, the victims of domestic abuse, 680,000 women victims of sexual assault, 110 women killed in the UK by men in 2020. Can you in good faith tell women watching this interview, watching us talk, that if they suffer violence or abuse and go to the police, that they'll get justice in this country? Good evening and thank you for inviting me along this evening. Yes, in answer to your question, I do think that women should and must feel confident in reporting offences relating to sexual assault, domestic abuse to the police, because we are absolutely determined to address what you've just described as, a, as an epidemic. And we mm. know that and we want to prioritise changing how we work within policing and how we address uh, the challenges that we know we've got ahead. Um, and Maggie, um, I guess part of the argument has been that the police could be part of, of the problem, not the, the solution. And there's a number of reasons I say that, but what, one reason is when I uh, interviewed the Prime Minister about this back in October at Conservative Party conference, uh, I asked him about the appalling statistics around rape prosecutions. And he said to me, people don't have enough confidence in the criminal justice system and they don't have a feeling that the police are handling these issues fast enough, which has led to this feeling of fury and frustration. So he kind of put it back on the criminal justice system, but also on the police. Well, how, how do you feel about that when you hear him say that? Do you share some of the blame or do you think he's shifting the blame? I'm listening to what women and girls say to me every day at the moment and I think that trust and confidence issue is absolutely right. Um, and policing knows that we've lost the trust and confidence of many communities, particularly women and girls uh, across, across our country. And that's something that really concerns us. Um, and we, we know, uh, particularly in the last few months, and some of the events, some of the tragic deaths of, of women mm. last year have really, really changed um, how uh, some communities, particularly women and girls, feel about policing. But, so yes, we hear that trust and confidence and, issue. And Maggie, I mean, one of the good news is, is that you've been appointed the lead in the police to actually tackle this across police forces. So uh, Priti Patel, the Home Secretary, said to me that she wanted to make it a national priority and she's put you in place, which means it has become a national priority, which is a positive thing. But I guess the thing is, is that what follows through from that? And, and one of the questions I had for you is that does your appointment, does the fact the government's making this a national priority mean that in practice the government now might hit these rate review targets that they set? And that was to get to nearly five, over 5,000 prosecutions and nearly 3,000 convictions by 2024. That's going back to 2016. You'll know all of this uh, levels. Last year, prosecutions were at 1,500, just to put it in some context. Can you give the commitment today now that you think, with you at the lead and, and this prioritisation, that the government can hit those targets and women can have confidence by 2024 the government will hit those targets? What I can talk about is I'm absolutely committed to ensuring that the things that need to change do change within policing, but we also know that we have to work with other sectors, with a range of other different organisations, including the CPS, if we're really going to make a difference for the criminal justice system as a whole. So I'm ambitious for change, and I know that we have a plan and will make some uh, significant changes over the next year, two years but moving forward. But we're, we're talking long term. So you, in, in terms of really those changing... Those are not realistic, are they, those it, targets? In, in terms of really changing, the attitudes of men and boys towards women and girls is going to take time. That isn't going and, to just happen overnight and, that we're going to see and I, increased and, and Maggie, I, do, I do want to come to that, but they're not realistic targets, are they? I mean, let's be straight. I, I think we have to have targets for improving both charges and prosecutions around rape and serious sexual offences and domestic abuse. We have to have those targets yeah. and the CPS and the police are working together around them. But we also have to be realistic that the criminal justice system alone, and particularly on the back of a pandemic, yes. where we know we've got the backlogs in yeah. the courts we have, 
is it's going to take time to bring those changes. You... And until we address the trust and confidence, which you, 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 yes. you introduced at the beginning, I think we've got some difficulties ahead. Just to be clear then, the targets are important, but the time frame might not be hit. Is that fair? I think the time frame, it, it's going to take years to yeah. really change our criminal okay, justice so system. OK, so not, not hit Being by... Being realistic. Not, yeah, not hit by 2024, which I think is a, a fair and straight answer. Um, let's talk about the police mm. and your role. The Everard case devastated women's confidence in the police and, and that was compounded by the policing of the vigil at Clapham Common. There were the WhatsApp messages about rape and violence and domestic violence from the Charing Cross police station. And then this week, there was the strip search of a young black girl, Char Q, at her own school, which has, has really upset, with, upset people. It's a problem, isn't it? The incidents and the cases and the particular matter around Child Q are, are really disturbing and, and are shocking, shock me and shock the people that I work with. And I think even more reason why we need to have a plan and a priority around tackling violence against women and girls. It's on the level of, of, of an epidemic in terms of the information and the data that we have, you, you outlined at the beginning. We know what the problem is. So, mm -hmm. We, we know that it's, it's an issue for society and therefore what we see in society, we will also see in policing. Mm. But we also know that this is something that we have to keep shining the light on. And the more that we do, I think the more cases we're going to see coming to light mm. around our own workforce, around police officers and staff, uh, behaving in a way that falls below the standard that we would expect within policing. And we mm. will root that out and already are on the way to do that through the plans that we have. Because, Maggie, actually, you, you, now you bring it up, I mean, dozens of male police officers are continuing to exploit their position and take sexual advantage of women. 66 officers and members of the police, you'll know this, face disciplinary proceedings for alleged abuse of position for a sexual purpose. Have you witnessed any of these attitudes among your, your colleagues? So, Personally. first of all, just to go back, there, there is an absolute plan to root out any, any behaviour or conduct that falls below what we would expect in policing. Mm. And the many officers and staff that I work with and I have led over the last few years want that. We don't want people in policing that uh, bring down the reputation of, of policing and, and don't fit with the ethics and values we hold uh, as so important. So really important to, to know that there's that plan. In terms of what, what um, I see, I, 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 yes, I, I experience and see what women tell me um, they've faced with, within policing and, and in other professions working alongside policing. Um, and it's really important that we have a culture where those things are talked about mm. amongst our teams and our supervisors, so, so, and women can come so even forward. So being a senior police officer, you, you've personally experienced sexism and... I, I have been really supported in, in my career through policing, and I wouldn't mm. be here, I wouldn't be doing the yeah. job I'm doing if I didn't feel that policing is a fantastic career and something to enjoy and be part of. Mm. Um, that's really important, yeah. I think, to get across. I want women to come and join policing. Um, I'm really pleased that we've got about 42% in our latest round coming to join policing. But yes, I, I've seen sexism and I know that misogyny exists in, in police forces um, and police, the police service as a whole. And, and really important that we tackle that. It exists because it exists in society. But I think there also is perhaps something about being attracted to power, being attracted to um, a, um, a, a culture that some largely men may, may find, find attractive and, and want to come into um, and uh, because of the, co the ability to coerce and abuse more people that are more vulnerable. Mm. So I think there's always that possibility, which we see in other professions as well, and our vetting and, and our culture has to be one where in teams, people can have those conversations and call out and feel that they will be listened to if they feel something. So you feel the more women in the police force, the more that dilutes that culture, that male culture? I, I think it does. It absolutely yeah. dilutes it, but also diversity. And, and having men, as we do have, who want to be very strong allies for calling out inappropriate culture and being part mm. of that change. Just one quick question on the most prominent police woman in the country, Cressida Dick. Um, did you think she was treated unfairly or was it understandable she had to go? How did you feel about that as a fellow senior policewoman? The Met Commissioner is a fantastic role model for, for women in policing. Um, 
her, her resignation really is a matter for um, the Mayor of London and the Home Secretary, so I, I wouldn't okay. comment. But a great role model for, for women in policing. So you found her inspiring. Absolutely, she inspired you. absolutely. Um, let, let's just tackle another problem. I'm actually running out of time. I've got so many questions. Um, you talked about male culture in the police, but is the real problem against, with violence against women and girls male culture in our society, has it got worse or are we getting more vocal about not putting up with it? I think very much the latter. I've, um, in a working career of over 30 years, and I've seen changes in, in that working career around our society, but there are attitudes we know still prevail. And I think a tipping point, which I have referred to, others have referred to as a watershed moment of last year, coming out of the pandemic, the spotlight that's been shone on what happens behind closed doors and sometimes in, in public places to women and girls and the Everyone's Invited website that's set up mm. by, by, by girls and, and young women um, accounting for, for the things that have happened to them. I think women and girls are saying enough. We, mm. we, we don't want to be treated like this. We don't have to have and put up with that type of behaviour. And that is a moment in time for me in my career, for, for me um, as, as, a, as a woman in society. And I think we need to grab that moment um, and to use what we know with that information you started out with this morning the epidemic in front of us, we need to be able to address it. But policing has to do that by working with other agencies, with education, with the rest of the criminal justice system, with, with health, because uh, ultimately this is, I think, a public health issue around uh, uh, violence. And, and Maggie, obviously, focus of forces help. Mm. Um, people speaking about it mm. helps. But in practical terms, what would help you in terms of policing? Would it help, for example, if misogyny became a help, help, hate crime? Would it help if public sexual harassment became a specific offence? I want to keep the spotlight on violence against women and girls. Um, I want there to be lasting change for how women and girls feel safe in our society. I want women and girls to trust policing and the plan we have, I think, will go, will go a long way to that. But I think it's a complex one, Mis misogyny is a hate crime. The government has accepted the Law Commission advice that um, it, it won't be um, included as a hate crime and policing uh, enforces the laws, we, we don't make it. Um, I think it's perhaps a very symbolic gesture to have, have done to, to make misogyny a hate crime, but mm. perhaps doesn't really get to the root of the problem. That what if about we sexual harassment, though. Well, well, well. I think the root of the problem is behaviour and attitudes of boys mm. and men. We've got lots of offences already, um, and we know that consistently we don't use them as well as we should mm. across our 43 police forces. We don't use some of the protective orders that we've got to keep women and girls safe well enough. So let's get working on that and let's get looking at the education and the changing attitudes of boys and men before we think we need more laws. Because I think prevention and education and tackling attitudes isn't necessarily about creating new legislation. Um, so I'm not entirely convinced, but we will work with government as they look into uh, mm. whether new laws are, are needed around street-based harassment. Um, and we will, we will want to recognise that there are additional pressures in the 21st century online that might mm. mean new legislation is Well, we are going to get the online harms bill. So, mm. well, look, Maggie, I would like to carry on, but I've got to wrap that. But thank you for coming on, and I hope you'll come back again thank in you. a few months' time and we could look at some of the stats and, and see if we're going the right way or the wrong way. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you Thanks so much. much.